Hey everybody, this is Rocky Balboa, and this uh, pre-calculus lesson is on uh, basic trig identities uh, uh, in section uh, chapter 7, section 1. Okay, trig ratios. Okay, remember these from, you should remember these, the sine uh, is the reciprocal of cosecant, uh, cosine is the reciprocal of secant, uh, just like the secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and just like the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. You're going to be using those a lot in this chapter. Also, you guys, uh, tangent is the same as sine over cosine. Get used to that. And cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So it's uh, the cosine over sine. All right. So here's some Pythagorean identities. Okay, we proved this uh, uh, in the last chapter. I think it was the last chapter. Maybe it was the chapter before that. That the sine squared of any angle plus the cosine squared of that same angle equals 1. All right. Well, you need to memorize that if you haven't yet. You need to memorize that. that that's going to be... Um, uh, used a lot in this chapter. Okay, let's take this uh, uh, that equation up there and let's divide everything by sine squared. Okay, when I divide everything by sine squared, can you see the sine squareds cancel out and I get 1? And then this is cosine squared uh, over sine squared gives me cotangent squared. And then 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. Okay, so here's a, it's called, this is another Pythagorean identity. I want you to memorize that one also. Okay, if you can memorize this one, then this one's easy to obtain by just dividing everything by sine squared. All right, let's take this top equation again, and let's divide everything by cosine squared this time. Okay, when I divide by cosine squared, I get tangent squared plus 1 equals secant squared. That's another one you guys need to memorize. We're going to be using these a lot, you guys, and we're going to be manipulating these, too. I can, this one up here, I can subtract sine squared from both sides and get cosine squared equals 1 minus sine squared. Or I can get sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared. Here I can just uh, I can flip these guys around also, and I can I can interchange these guys around also. Can you see that tangent squared equals secant squared minus one? Okay. Uh, can you see here that cotangent squared equals cosecant squared minus one? Okay. How I remember this one is co goes with co, cotangent goes with cosecant, co goes with co. That's how I remember that one. All right. Let's let's try some of these. So let's find some of these, you guys. So if secant of some angle equals three halves, what's the cosine? Well, the cosine's the the invert. I'm sorry, the reciprocal of secant. So you just reciprocate three halves, and it's going to equal two thirds. Okay. This one's not so easy, you guys. Uh, if cosecant of an angle equals four thirds, find the tangent of that angle. All right. Well, what you need to do on this one is because um, uh, cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Well, they, I, I can't really uh, figure that out with tangent right there. So I'm going to use my Pythagorean identities uh, that cosecant squared equals one plus cotangent squared. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, square that four thirds right there because cosecant uh, is equal to four thirds. So cosecant squared is four thirds squared. Okay, and then so 4 thirds squared, you square 4 is, is 16, square 3 is 9, and you get uh, 16 ninths equals uh, 1 plus cotangent. I'm going to change that 1 to 9 ninths, so then I can subtract 9 ninths from 16 ninths. See, now I have cotangent right here, and I'm getting close to tangent. So cotangent squared is equal to 7 ninths, so if I square root both sides, I get the cotangent equals plus or minus the square root of 7 over the square root of 9, which is 3. Okay, so... Um, uh, if I reciprocate that now, because tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other, so I'm just going to flip this upside down to get 3 over root 7, which is 3 root 7 over 7. Okay, don't forget your plus or minus. So there's your answer right there. All right, and what I did was I used one of my Pythagorean identities right there. Okay, let's try something else here. Okay, this time, if uh, cosine of theta equals 3 fifths, find the cosecant of theta. All right, what I'm going to do on this one is uh, use that first identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And I'm babysitting a dog, so you can hear her whining in the background, maybe. Uh, so my mom's dog, she went down to my sister's house. Uh, and so, uh, let's see, so uh, uh, sine squared plus cosine squared, I'm going to put in this cosine squared. Uh, cosine squared uh, is going to be 3 fifths squared, which is 9 twenty fifths. Okay, and I exchange this 1 for 25 over 25, so I can get subtract and get uh, sine squared is equal to uh, 16 over 25. So sine is equal to the plus or minus the square root of 16 over 25, which is 4 fifths. Okay, so sine and, and I'm looking for cosecant. So cosecant and sine are reciprocals of each other. So it, the answer is going to be plus or minus uh, 5 fourths. Okay, so you're just using those identities. All right, so express each value as a trig function of an angle in quadrant 1. Well, quadrant 1 is an angle either between 0 and 90 or in radians, it would be between um, 0 and pi over 2. 
Okay, so 600 degrees is not between 0 and 90. So what i got to do is think of 600 degrees as one complete revolution, which is 360, plus uh, an additional 240. So look, here I go. Here's right there to there is my 360 right there, and then plus my 240 right there. Okay, well, my 240 takes me down in quadrant 3. Only tangent's positive in quadrant 3, so sine is negative in quadrant 3. So this, my reference angle is 60 degrees right there. My reference angle is always off the x-axis right there. So since sine is negative right there, to represent this as in quadrant 1, then I'm going to say it's negative to sine of positive 60 right there. Okay? All right, so they said represent it as an angle in quadrant 1. Well, sine of 60 is, uh, is uh, the same as... Um, uh, well, the negative sine of 60 is going to be the same as uh, the sine of 600 right there. All right. Okay, so how about this? The cosine of 19 pi over 4. All right, I've got to think of 19 pi over 4 as 16 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4. And 16 pi over 4 is the same as 4 pi, which is two revolutions. One revolution, two revolutions, and then plus my 3 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 is right there. Okay, so cosine is negative, only sine is positive, so this is going to be uh, negative cosine of pi over 4, because pi over 4 would be over here. They want me to represent it as quadrant 1, but cosine is negative over here, so i got to negate uh, that negative, so it's negative cosine of pi over 4. What if I said the sine of 19 pi over 4? Well, that's the same uh, rotation right there, and sine's positive, so it's going to be the, the same as uh, the sine of uh, pi over 4. Okay, uh, dog. Uh, she did. My my mom went down to L.A. and so my dog is uh, uh, missing missing her mama. She's whining in the background. Davin is her name. All right. So the tangent of 410, you guys. Negative 410 is the same as negative 360 plus uh, 50. Remember, negative is clockwise. So there's negative 360 plus that 50 right there. Tangent's negative in that quadrant, so it's negative tangent of 50. Okay, all right, let's simplify some of these. Okay, so here we have the sine of x plus the sine of x cotangent squared of x. All right, can you see I can GCF out to sine of x, and I'm left with 1 plus cotangent squared of x? And right there, there's an identity. Co goes with co, so this is cosecant squared of x, you guys. So I'm going to replace that with cosecant squared of x. And cosecant squared of x is 1 over sine squared of x, and then I can cancel the sine of x and the 1 over sine squared of x, and, and I'm left with 1 over sine of x, which is cosecant of x. Pretty cool, huh? Let's try one more. Okay, this one here, um, there's no squares on this one here. So what I, uh, if there's no squares on this one, then it's wise to change everything to sine and cosine. So this is 1 over sine. This is cosine over 1. Cotangent is cosine over sine. So I'm going to change them all to sines and cosines. Okay, so now uh, this becomes cosine squared right here over sine. And this is 1 over sine, so there's common denominators. It becomes 1 minus cosine squared of x over sine of x. Okay, remember that first identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So sine squared, if I subtract cosine squared from both sides, is 1 minus cosine squared. Well, 1 minus cosine squared is right there, so I'm going to replace this with sine squared. Okay, so that's sine squared of x, and then, and then the sine of x takes off one of the sines of x on the top, and I'm left with the sine of x on that.